Alright guys, welcome to your 11th Q video, and in this video, now that we're done with the user interface, what we can do now is hop over to the header file for FineCrap, and we actually don't need to do much to this file, we actually only need to add one line of code, and that's this. If you go in your private, right under this UI, FineCrap, UI object, what we want to do is we want to create a function later on that's going to be responsible for loading the text file because of course we need a text file that we can search through or else this program would be useless. So void and we'll just call it get text file and it's not going to take any parameters and there you go that's it your header file is now done. So even though we are done coding in the header file what I want to do is take some time and go through line by line what all of this is because even though Q auto generated everything for us it's better if we have a better understanding of what each line does so the obvious stuff you know uh, these the include we already know what include means this namespace right here um, a lot of people may not know what a namespace is namespaces let you group things like classes together so if you have multiple classes that you want to group together in a namespace you can go ahead and throw them all in here and it just makes them easier to work with later on um, of course this is our class right here what else do we need to talk about this Q object this is actually a macro that Q says it's pretty much a rule that we have to follow whenever we are defining signals or slots Q says that you need to include this macro again just a rule that you know we have to follow um, under public what do we have this is just the constructor and the constructor takes a parameter as you can see and what oh, freaking motorcycle okay good timing with that motorcycle so basically what it does is it asks for the parent but what we did is we set the parent to zero or null now whenever we set the parent to null it means that no parent exists or it has no parent so basically we're saying okay in the constructor it has no parent of course under that is the deconstructor which is basically responsible for cleaning everything up now in our private slots let me scroll down a little bit the private slot obviously on go button clicked is just the user action what happens whenever they click the go button makes sense and uh, these last two right here this UI object is it pretty much is going to represent the overall interface and of course the last thing we need to talk about is this function I already told you guys what it does whenever we're uh, running our program we're going to need to load in a text file and this is going to be the function that loads in the text file so anyways that is uh, pretty much all of the header stuff we need to take care of what I want to do now is actually jump into finecraft.cpp and we can go ahead and start coding everything so the first thing I actually like to do before I start coding anything is I just like to clean all this up because I don't like how this is laid out this may be the proper way but it just annoys me so I'm gonna put that right there and this right here and also just put my semicolons actually I'll put this down here so you guys can see it now I know this is a you know kind of a waste of time but it really annoys me if I don't do this so <laughs> sorry guys alright so you see that we how many functions do we have we have the constructor right here and then the deconstructor and then we have uh, this function right here which is basically the function that gets called whenever the user clicks the button now what we want to do is since we created one or declared a function right here in the header file I want to go ahead and code that function first so this is called get text file so let's go ahead and code this baby so void find crap colon colon get text file right there now of course it didn't take any parameters and let me go ahead and give you guys a little bit more space to see alright so the first thing that we need to do is we need of course before I start talking about code remember what the program does one more time it loads in a text file and then you type in a term and then it searches that text file for that term for example if it was a story about Bucky you could search Bucky and it's gonna find every word Bucky in that story so the first thing that we need to do is we need to actually say what text file do we want to load in now it's a Q file object and I'll just go ahead and name it my file and as a parameter um, it's actually the name of your file but a little bit different what you need to do is put a colon and then a forward slash and then whatever the name of your text file is so you can actually find any text file any 
anyone's gonna work but I'll just make up a fake text file later on called crap about Bucky dot text and okay looking pretty good so now what we need to do is we actually need to open up this file so we can use it because in this line what we did is we pretty much uh, you know just stored it in an object now that we have the object let's go ahead and do something with it so my file the function is called open and as a parameter for this you actually write q i o device read only so that is how we're going to open up our file is read only since we don't need to edit it or write to it or anything else so now that we have our file opened up we actually need to um convert it to a stream so but q text stream popping up right there and what can I name this? I don't know, I'll just keep it simple. Text stream. 